Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne for 2014, our eighth season of the Intel Extreme Masters. Game one is done and dusted. Got uh, Apollo with me to talk a little bit about it before we go into game two. Uh, was that, I mean, you called it an artosis bop, but was it really as clear cut as that? Because I thought Revenge started out okay in map one. He started really good in map number one. Um, just with his opening Reaper, you not really meant to get that much done. The scouting intel, the probes coming off, the kills. So he did start really, really well. But then with that one mistake that he made in game number one, it all just went, woo. Yeah, those feedbacks, man. Oh, my word. Yeah. Just... I've had that happen to me many times as a Terran. It's one of the soul-destroying things about playing it. Sometimes you, a lot of you, you think you're ahead, you think you're being really aggressive, and then suddenly, boom, you've lost. Uh, so, and then map two is a lot more simple for him, for MC. And he's been playing really well, hasn't he? Last, I'd say, what, six months, seven months? Yeah, um, he's back training a lot right now. Um, last year, he was eh, not playing as much. He was doing a lot of other things. Um, but in the last six months, he said he's playing eight hours a day, getting in 30, 40 games every single day. And it's really showing. Second place, Sao Paulo. He started off really strong here, and he's definitely a favorite to advance in the open bracket. Mm. Talking of favorites, uh, Sam was one of our other favorites in the open bracket. I, I'm, I can't even believe the words are going to come out of my mouth saying this, but he's out of the tournament already at the first round. Well, not out of the tournament as such, because he's gone down the lower bracket, but out of the upper bracket of the open bracket to Hasselbs 2-0. Yeah, PvP can be super brutal sometimes, especially in a best of three. Uh, so that's a massive win there for Hazobs. But he's always had a great PvP, and he's always been really good playing uh, against a lot of other Protoss players. It's a great result for him. Yeah, uh, Stardust uh, threw in his game as well, which we kind of expected. But in the other match of the quarterfinals, TLO versus Hanfi, the all-German affair. I think most people would have said TLO would have come through that one, but he's crashed out 2-0. Yeah, and that's a, that's a big surprising result there. I'm not sure if he was overlooking his opponent a little bit, because I think a lot of people in that bracket would have just said, well, you know, TLO is an expected victory there. Um, but yeah, he's got to work hard now if he wants to challenge for the top two slot. Put some really good players in the lower bracket. That's Revenge, TLO. <laughs> And sad. Yeah, and they're crazy. all in the lower that's... bracket now. So and they're gonna have to play against each other soon. It's... Yeah, oh. yeah. So we've got uh, Hasselobs versus MC. That's next up. We know how good Hasselobs PVP is. I mean, he's already beaten Sand here today. But before that, we already knew that his PVP was very good. I mean, some have said he's he can be very boring and very mm. pla uh, very uh, passive when he's playing PVP. But it works for him. And today, bizarrely. He opened with Tengate map two, and everyone was like, hang on a minute, is the sky falling down? What's going on? And it works for him. So he seems to have blended that kind of really cool experience that he's had with a little bit more aggression, and it's paying off for him. Yeah, and to beat San, who is basically, he won the Asus RG, he 4-0'd yep. in the finals, in a PvP final. He's excellent in that matchup, and for Hazobs to do that, it's a massive, massive result. But then on the other side of things, MC's got a lot of experience in PvP just recently, with his games against CJ Hero in the Intelstream Masters Sao Paulo final. He played Liquid Hero and managed to beat Liquid Hero in a very close series in the Todd's Little Invitational Tournament. So this actually... This should, on paper, be a really good game. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping very much the same. Uh, and I think it's probably a good time to go over to our commentary team for it as well. And the good news is we have the master of Protoss, unless he's playing Mini Razor. It is, of course, Kolaris and Todd. Thanks very much, guys. How are you feeling, Todd? Are you doing all right? There's going to be payback for this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Paul, he, he keeps stepping in things, and uh, eventually he's, he's going to get bopped himself, maybe. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> for now, welcome to the caster's desk here. We have a surprise turnout for a lot of people. A lot of people expected San to be in this position, but now Hasuobs took a 2-0 off him. You were able to watch a little bit of those games. Yeah, I thought you were going to say for a second that we had a surprise PvP coming up, but uh, I've said it in the last <laughs> tournament, this is our first PvP, probably not last of the tournament, and right. what... A PvP we're gonna have here. Azuops just beating San. Uh, as much as I'm surprised, I did mention that those matches were two very tricky matches for both MC and San in the first round. Because Azuops, he's been practicing a lot. Yeah. He he's been boot camping with Sokke, Nomi, other German protosses, and uh, it's really shown in those last games that uh, he played against San. He played very very solid. He was not always ahead. He did not do dominate San by any means, but beating. One guy that just recently won one of the hardest tournaments is definitely to be respected. On the other hand, you have MC. He did lose uh, in the grand finals of uh, the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo. And he did, he lost against CJ Hero. So I guess we can forgive yeah. him for that one. Behind this, he beat uh, Team Liquid's Hero 
with four to three in my little tournament. Thanks, Apollo. Uh, that's, that was online and it was no major tournament, but that's still a very nice win for him. So it's going to be pretty interesting, especially to see how these guys style match up against each other. We have aggression versus defense. And, and the cool thing about this is that they actually met each other not too long ago in, in the Frag Bite Masters, where Hasu Wobbs was able to defeat MC 2-0, and that's their most recent matchup against one another. So Hasu Wobbs could actually ride this whole open bracket yeah. out on his PvP alone, which has always been very strong. The German scene has been pretty strong in terms of Protoss versus Protoss. You see it a lot in the EPS Germany, Hasu Wobbs and Sokke always having this very strong rivalry with one another. Uh, and it's very, very back and forth, but I Hasu Wobbs doing well. It's a new MC we're seeing these days. It's yeah, an MC yeah. that's came back from, I guess, a little bit of inactivity for some time, or as in he didn't practice as much as he used to. He lost to Hazu Ops, as you say, but he had a few other encounters at Home Story Cup, for example, yeah. where he lost to lesser Protosses than him. And uh, right now, I really think that he's playing the best he's ever had. And that's, that's saying that about the guy that's been the most successful in StarCraft 2 and over many years. Mm. So uh, I do think that MC, he's, he's not supposed to lose here in the open bracket. He's supposed to make it all the way to at least the finals. So he can take his second place, possibly, or maybe another championship. Uh, so I would be very surprised if Hasuops is able to win. Then again, Hasuops has played so well versus Sand that uh, it's, there is a very real possibility we might see that happen. Yeah, I mean, you only need to think back to those games against Hero uh, that we saw in, in Sao Paulo, where that PvP series that we cast together was so tip-top level. I mean, you were flabbergasted yourself as to yeah. exactly the quality of those games. But at the same time, San just won an entire tournament off PvP. So if um, uh, if Hasuobs is able to defeat San, the spec of a champion uh, from previous tournaments, then anything's possible here. Yeah, and uh, Sen, as good as he is, uh, even though he last uh, he won uh, the last big tournament that he played in, uh, I have to say his games, for me, sides weren't that impressive. Some of the decision-making, like, in the start of the game, it was super solid. Then in the mid-game, he had some weird attacks. In both games, he had a huge attack when he was mm -hmm. maxed out, in which he lost quite hard against the concave and defense of his opponents. Uh, Hasuops was able to reinforce into the big fights. They both had a lot of Colossus, and then from there... If you lose a big fight and you lose most of your Colossus and you're left with, say, like two Colossus versus six, you're in a lot of trouble. And this is what happened both times uh, for San. I expect MC versus Hazuops to be completely different. I expect fireworks right from the start, in particular from MC. Hazuops, he's shown some very good aggression versus San, but now he knows that he's up against somebody who's one of probably the best Protoss player at early on aggression. So he might go into full defensive mode. So that's going to be interesting to see exactly how he goes into this match uh, with what kind of mindset. What do you think? Well, I mean, when, when you were talking about MC's aggression, something that comes to mind very, very strongly is that kind of three-gate stalker aggressive style that we see from him there. So, I mean, Hasselhoff's probably thinking about that as well and knowing that he might have to play defensively against that, and he is one of the best at it. So this is, as you said before, a real clash of styles. Uh, and I'm very interested to see how it's going to go. I, I actually can't call this. I, it could go either way. Yeah, I was talking a little bit with Hazuops uh, prior to him playing his first game here. And I was saying that how, how nice it is that everybody is basically diversifying their play. Mm. Everybody is trying new strategies. We are even playing different styles now than we used to. Remember, I, I too used to be the guy that doesn't attack much, but now I attack a lot more. And Hazu is, I would say... For a long time, he's been considered one of the best defensive protos in Europe. He still is, but now he can mix in some very good aggression with this. He's just shown it uh, versus San. Even though uh, his 10 gates didn't work, he could have really caught San of guard if San had been greedy. Yeah. Which, yeah. for a lot of players, it's going to happen sometimes versus Hazel. Because you think this guy, he always plays defensive and he's going to be greedy, which is a good way to play versus somebody that's defensive because he's not going to punish you for your greed. But then the one time you do this, if you get caught off guard... It's going to be pretty bad. So MC is going to have to be careful not to get tricked himself. He's the, usually the one who gets the better end of trying to trick his opponent. But Hagen Hazu here is, again, uh, a matchup that could prove to be tricky. Yeah, I have to agree with what you say about Hasu in terms of you know, he diversified up his strategies. There was all too often that we saw him things like EPS Germany and even all the way back in 2012 where we had him playing in WCS Germany. We saw in the finals a PvP against Zocker, and Zocker was so sure, 
as to what Haswobs was doing, Zocker went like one gate expand in every single game uh, and had it written on a little piece of paper, showed it at the end after winning the entire series because he absolutely 100% <laughs> knew what like Haswobs was going to do. It was <laughs> his ceremony is like showing his playbook on the camera. Pretty much. It was like this little scrap of paper and he knew what he was going to do. But ha since then, Haswobs has changed. He is a much more well-rounded player, able to bring a lot to the table. He's a new uh, man. He is a new man. And, uh, well... I saw his MC. So his MC. Yeah, that's, you're right, actually. So, uh, bit of an odd one here. Bit of an odd one. It could go either way. As I say, I can't really predict it. Normally, I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll just go for this particular score. Sometimes I'm wrong, but... Oftentimes, we see we see kind of a you know a swing towards the right direction. So, in your predictions, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, more so than not. I was wrong with one or two during WCS Europe. We won't talk about those for the challenger, but um, for now, I mean, other things going on in the lower half of the bracket. Uh, whilst we're just getting the map vetoes done for these two guys, we have San versus Revenge. Paul Revenge, he's had to. <laughs> go through MC in the upper bracket. He's <laughs> like MC no, first round and San. Oh my god, that's oh. like. Something, uh, when it happens, you're usually not really happy. Obviously, no. you're like, you need to try and beat everybody, but beating possibly two of the best three players in this bracket, I would say, with Stardust, uh, in his first two matches, uh, really going to be tough on him. And TLO is going to take on Mini Razor in, a, in another ZVZ. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, so one of these guys is actually... The winner of TLO versus Mini Razor should be playing against the loser of... MC has the ups, maybe? Yes. I see some so. guaranteed protos. So maybe will, that game will be streamed later on. I was very interested in Hanfi versus TLO, and I'm a little bit sad that I wasn't able to see those games because um, Hanfi, for the longest time in the German scene, has been a very, very good Zerg player, even winning an EPS at the time, yeah. whereas TLO never plays in EPS. So I was very curious to see how that ZVZ was going to match up because, obviously, both German Zergs, Hanfi, for the longest time in the EPS Germany, has been pretty much the strongest Zerg. It's been hard to really challenge him, but um, but TLO losing out 2-0 there uh, is a little bit of a little bit of an upset in that bra in that result, I would say. So now we have Hasu Obs on screen. The map vetoes have been done, and this guy uh, won three EPS titles during StarCraft II. He was one of the first, I think he was the first to win an EPS title in StarCraft II, as well as WarCraft III here in Germany. How many in WarCraft III? I don't know. I can't. I can't say. Um, I don't. I haven't looked into that. But he, you know, he's 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 been a stable, stable place uh, and part of the German scene for a long time. And then, of course, we have MC. We just saw him absolutely demolish Paul Revenge, who now has quite a tough time ahead of him in the lower bracket as well. I really do feel sorry for Revenge because he played so well during that Katowice qualifier. Has to play MC and then San in the lower. Tough times. Yeah, but uh, here, Habitation Station as our first map. One of the most interesting maps in PvP right now, in my opinion, just because of the, the positioning, the very close air distance between the bases, which will make a lot of players try and go for some kind of Stargate play, quick Mothership Core, uh, rush to try and spot something. And this could really be that we're going to see fireworks even more than we would have on, a, for example, a map like Frost. MC, he's shown before that on this map, he likes to go for something like a uh, Zealot, a uh, Stalker, and a Mothership Core Rush. But against somebody, against like Hazu, who's very good at defense, I don't think it will do that well. So does is MC aware of that? Does he try something different? And Hazu Ops, actually, this is funny because I played him in ladder recently twice on this map. Yeah. And one time I tried to proxy him, the other time he tried to proxy me. <laughs> he won both times. Uh-oh. <laughs> so he's, I think he's really good on this map. He reads the, he reads the map and uh, the gameplay on it very, very well, and he always adapts very, very well to it as well. Like, uh, when he proxied me, he act it actually didn't work, so he was behind, but his macro is just so consistent behind this that he can rebuild himself back up into games, and attacking into this guy is, like, the trickiest thing ever. That is a tough position to be in. Now, we have the map order on screen here. Habitation Station, Ultra Zoom, Stronghold, and then Frost wow, if we need it. This is like Habitation Station, the, the action map, the small map where yeah. you can rush very quickly. Then Atrazim, more <laughs> of a turtle map. Yeah, yeah. I would say actually, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Atrazim is, uh, has to up his pick here because we've mentioned this. He likes to play defensively, he likes to macro, he likes to take more bases. And uh, I actually think on Atrazim, he, he might be the favorite. If, the, if it goes into a long game, 
Akusi has you up, so taking it quite convincingly on Altrazim. And the last time I saw him in PvP on Altrazim was huge Phoenix versus Phoenix uh, over at ESGN with, uh, against Grubby, and he, he controlled it so brilliantly, did Hasu. So um, he's certainly no stranger to those very, very late game situations, especially on a huge map where air is oftentimes a great option. Uh, yeah. Even myself, I've had a bit of trouble against, you know, big, big Phoenix numbers on Altrazim. It can be really difficult to hold off. You have to go for Phoenix yourself, pretty much. Yeah, and uh, actually Showtime, another German Protoss, he's very, very good, in my opinion, in macro games, in late game PvP. Uh -huh. I had a chance to play against him. And Hasuops possibly... Did, did he play against Showtime recently in the German tournaments? Um, he may they must have, have done. In my opinion, they are two of the very best right now. With Hirmo yeah. and Soccer, they are very high up there. So if Hasuops, I would say... There is a good chance here. He has a lot more experience than MC in the, the very long games. Then again, it's not every game that you get to see very, very long game in PvP. San didn't seem to mind going into the late game versus Hazu. And look where it took him. He lost 0-2. Yes, he did. So now he's going to have to really pay attention here. Um, they did, uh, just so, uh, just to p pull you up on that, they actually, Showtime and Hasobs did play each other in the previous EPS season during the final group stage, and Showtime was able to take that series 2-1. to one. Uh, Showtime advancing onto the brackets and then being eliminated by Zocca. But now we get into this series. Mr. MC going to play against Hasuobs. One of these guys is going to go on to the upper bracket final, and that will allow them to compete for that first qualifying spot onto tomorrow. So one of them will have a relatively short day. The other one will fall down to the lower and have to battle it out just a little bit further. A lot more games have to be played if you fall down there, and you don't want to be starting out the day like that. Yeah, uh, we need making it to at least the... the, the finals of the, that winner bracket uh, in the open bracket obviously really going to help yeah. even if you lose then I think it's just one more match yeah just uh, one more match then you can make it but man these open brackets are so stacked like, they are. it's not like you look at them and you, you say this guy and this guy will make it out like we said MC and San but now look at look at this San already in the lower bracket MC here even though he's a favorite he could surely uh, lose so uh, going to be interesting to see how it all turns out, turns out and if the favorites do make it or not. But uh, here in this game, man, I, I, I'm really curious to see what MC is going to go for in particular because I can kind of feel like Hasuob is going to want to play some kind of safe mm, yeah. opener, whereas MC might be the one taking the risks. Well, we have a little bit of a sound issue here be, uh, for Hasuob, so that's going to get sorted out hopefully quickly and then we'll jump back into these games. Um, but I have, to, I have to come back to what you said, you know, MC, we've seen him time and time again use that uh, that Zealot Stalker Mothership Core aggression on this map that oftentimes really does well for him as we have a little bit of stretching going on for MC. But he always stretches a lot. Yeah, he does. A lot uh, of games. Keeps himself fit. Keeps himself well flexible. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm going with that. <laughs> Keep <But> going. <laughs> but anyway. Um, okay, so... Mr. MC saying, is it sorted? Um, so I think we're going to be getting back into this game as the go-go has been thrown out from Hasuobs and MC is saying go-go. So I'm looking forward to this PvP. We've had a lot of fantastic PvPs recently, a lot that we've had the pleasure of casting together, Todd. And I think this one will be no different. All right, so our MC versus Hasuobs here. Best of three. Winner will advance onto the upper bracket final. And then from there, one of them will claim a qualifying spot towards the groups tomorrow as we have spawning up to the top right-hand corner here, our red Protoss representing Mouse Sports, it's Hasuobs. The epic zoom. And then up to the top left-hand corner, winner of our previous series here on our stream, in the blue, it is MC. Such epic music. Go with those epic zooms. Yeah, man, it's important. All right, first thing to pay attention in this matchup is there's not going to be any proxy. Now, those either of them go for a gate 10. It looks like not. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to have some kind of super early aggression with some some kind of gate 10 into three gates, uh, like what Hazuops did versus San in map two. They are going to be looking to open a lot more standard on this map. And oh, okay, gate 13 for both players. Both of them scouting for proxies. 
very important, very important here, especially, you know, after what you just said, you know, if Hasu does want to go for proxy from time to time, we've already said before that he can mix things up, uh, even here in PvP, so both oh, wow. being very diligent about that scout. See that? He went quite far. He wanted to see if yeah. there was maybe gateways down this uh, position, which sometimes players do go for to try and surprise their opponent. Double gas thrown down at the same time. Uh, mirror builds so far yeah. from both of these players. Not too bad. This is going to transition as nicely on. Depends on how many they actually put in the gas here. As two go into the first one for MC. Likewise, two probably end up going in the second. And over at Hasuob's side of things, what is he up to? He's just transitioning only... Well, okay, so he goes into the second yeah. one as well. So very, very similar. I didn't make a prediction on this map as far as strategies will go. I just said probably aggression against defense. But right now it does look like MC... Uh, He's more likely to do uh, like a standard. Oh, actually, he starts a zealot. Yeah, I feel like it's really hard to predict on this map. There is so many options, so many more options than there would be on, on for, say, for example, a four-player's map, just because of, of the close by air distance. Well, I mean, in essence, you did make the prediction of you know we see MC a lot going for zealot, stalker, mothership, yeah. ship course straight away and rallying that straight over, and that is what he is doing here. So he's playing to the T of his build normally. Yeah, and he's going to have another Chrono Boost, and that's what he's going to go for again. Yeah. This is his go-to build, it seems like, on this map. Now, Hazuops, I'm sure he's aware of that. Surely he must have watched uh, his game versus Hero in Sao Paulo. And if he's ready for this, he's going to have a very nice hold and be in a good position. Then again, MC, he does not really commit everything he has to this. This was still a gateway 13, and even if he loses a boss of uh, all of his units even, or just survives with one, he will not have invested all that much into it. See, he's, he still has a decent yeah. economy behind it. Uh, for Hasuobs, the tech pylon that I like to call it is positioned in such a way that it looks as if it will be a Stargate going off of this. Normally you would have the pylon at the very back and maybe throwing down a Twilight Council. Um, but I see all those PvP casting <laughs> 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 has made you pretty insane. For, uh, <laughs> the thing is, he throws the Stargate down in another location, so thanks Hasuobs, but whatever. <laughs> So, yeah, that is now on the way. Uh, but all this kind of boost early on yeah. for MC. Yes, they were focused on units, but oh, Hasuops is way out of position yeah. with his mothership call. No, but did you see? He did that on purpose. He went around oh. because he wanted to surprise his opponent. And now he's going to have a mothership call doing a lot of damage to MC's base. MC is just about to get a sentry in his main. And that's not enough to push away a mothership call. So this is going to get maybe a few probe kills here. He could even just dive out the back of the mineral line and maybe recall back later on. So More uh, than a few if he commits to it, I think. Look, already two. Is he going to get the sentry? Oh, he should target probes. I don't think getting the sentry is that important here. Yeah, especially since it's not doing... But if he kills it, I guess he can sit around and try and do more damage with uh, to the probes. But meanwhile, all the stalkers are actually dying off here for Hasselbs. Wow. Really good control by MC as he continues to micro against those probes. And he's actually killing quite a few himself. Okay, I uh, predicted aggression and defense. And I guess we get aggression versus aggression. Both players losing a ton of workers already early on in this game. Wow. But Hasselbs has killed more. Look at the mothership. Yeah, seven kills so far here. The probe numbers are very even though. Six t uh, loss versus seven. And uh, Phoenix is on the way to put a timer on this mothership call that doesn't have energy uh, to actually recall or anything. So he actually will kill that, uh, guaranteed, which is very nice. And he's denied a lot of mining time here, Sasuobs. And he's getting another sentry. I don't Wait. know if he'll die. I don't understand. Ah. MC keeps on getting sentries. He's barely going to save this one. He's got warp gate. Now he's going to warp in a stalker. Hasuobs should be able to get out of there. Oh, he recalls 12 kills on that mothership call. Are you kidding very me? Very nice. So has, both players took a ton of damage, but 10 probes killed versus just 8. Hazuops is actually on the same work account as his opponent. This is more than fireworks, man. This is dynamite early on. The, it really both is. Both of these threw at each other. And unfortunately, that dynamite was able to catch uh, MC's Mothership Core, which does now leave Hasuobs technically a little bit ahead in terms of those resources lost. But uh, he also needs to know now that there is an expansion going down. Did that Phoenix just see it? I uh, no, he did not see it. So very important for him to know that that is going on. But he's got probe down to the bottom left-hand corner as well. Maybe Hasu wants to get aggressive off this. Yeah, he's only getting... Uh, actually, he added a, another gate now, so I think... Knowing that his opponent is going for an access, he's going to want to look to be aggressive here. And he knows that MC didn't even start any tech. So those Phoenixes, they're going to be very strong uh, as far as harassing cap capabilities go, as well as attacking. And uh, this would, could work out really, really well for Hasu. But oh, he's thinking about the Nexus actually here now. He maybe changed his mind. He just got those gateways to be safe. His Nexus is going to be much later than his opponent. But MC not having any tech here. He has no way to defend very well against those Phoenixes. Yeah. So he's not going to be able to saturate his natural early on. I think also all the committal to the sentries, you know, that was a lot of gas invested in that that died off to a mothership core. Meanwhile, we have Hasu having pumped all of his gas into these Phoenix, which are being really annoying. So yeah. uh, it's really, really good position here for Hasuobs early on.
Well, Hazu, he did spot the, the Twilight Council, so he knows the timing uh, on either Dark Templars or Blink from now. And see, he's going to throw a Robo. He's going to play it safe. Oh, and he sees going into the Twilight Council, so he absolutely has so much information. As the Ops is playing out game number one very well, but the probe down to the bottom left. Interesting. Wow. He scared that with a hallucinated yeah. phoenix You're of not all supposed things. to go there, and he just flew right above <laughs> it and then leaves. And the probe is like, well, I'm out of here, I guess. Yeah. What a... What sense here, what vision by MC to realize that that could occur. One probe will end up falling for Hasuob, so not too bad. 27 to 24 workers at the moment, but we have double probes being produced here from MC. Yeah, MC, he has completely skipped Robo. So right now his priority is making sure he's not up against Dark Templars. He sees that there's three gateways. He sees the Robo. I'm not sure if he was able to see that there is a Void Rain production right now, which I quite like. We've seen MC uh, getting Void Race himself versus the Blink Stalkers of Hero previously. And, uh, well, doing descent with them up until the way, mm. uh, the moment he lost. But uh, it's it's a good thing to do. At least having one or two with that charge really going to help in defending these uh, stalkers from your opponent. And uh, again, this is a favorable position for Hazu because he likes those games where you go to up to two base, three bases, getting Colossus, making sure he's safe. This is his area of expertise. This is where he plays the best. Yeah, and generally we would actually, in PvP, see Hasuobs throwing down Forges pretty fast, but with this Immortal Void Ray play... Oh, and gets a few oh. sentries, and they had so much energy on them as well! Oh, that was really good, even though he lost one Phoenix here, and Hasuobs did this so well. He stood between the main and natural because he knew probes had to be transferred there. He knew he couldn't get into the middle lines because there was enough Stalkers and he would have lost his Phoenixes, so he picks up the two sentries, which basically removes the scouting capability of MC completely right now. Mm -hmm. MC has no Robo, he has no Stargate. The only thing he could scout with was the Hallucination. Now he's going for a Templar Archives, and I have to wonder, does he go for some kind of uh, charge lot Templar timing with six gateways? Does he go for another base? I'm surprised he hasn't made a Robo still. Like, this is very, very dangerous right now. But then again, he did see that there was a Robo made by his opponent and, and no Twilight earlier. I really like also that Hasselob's actually killed those uh, sentries off because if an engagement were to come right now, he doesn't have any massive units to break down force fields and he would get caught up. So there's actually no sentries available here to MC until he just warped in those two, which now takes away a little bit of gas from anything yeah, else that MC would exactly. want to do. And that's, that's some very important gas. He even took his gases and his expansion later than Hazu. Mm. Hazu doing such a good job of chrono-boosting probes. Look, he's still chrono-boosting probes. He's not chrono-boosting uh, upgrades. He's just now finishing his forge. He didn't have to chrono-boost uh, any Colossus just yet. I guess he just let his Immortals uh, be made normally. And I think Hazu from there, if he goes into a third base, he's going to be in a great position. But he's, he's going to have to be careful not to underestimate this uh, charge lot. Archon army is possibly going to have to face, but uh, then again, Hazuops is definitely again not to underestimate any attack. Void Ray Immortal. That, that actually, that's going to be the fourth Immortal coming out here, so that's yeah. a lot of firepower. He already has three out on the field, and there's only nine Stalkers to really compete against that. It's going to have to be so many Zealots coming out from MC, otherwise his army is going to get ripped to shreds. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful uh, here. Uh, actually, MC didn't even start charge. Hmm. He's getting a robo right now, he's adding on extra gateways. I guess he wanted to invest his gas into Archons at first. Maybe he was afraid of some kind of two-base timing. But I mean, coming into this PvP series, a lot of people would go look at this and say, MC, you know, it's MC, he's the clear favorite. But I'm guessing here that if you were in this situation, you'd probably want to be in Hasuob's shoes right now. Yeah. You mean as far as the game goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah as far yeah. as this one's going. I like his uh, Yeah, I like the situation he's in right now a lot yeah. better. Uh, he's. He's getting his upgrade, he's getting Colossus, he knows exactly what he's up against. He had the scouting up until now, he had the scouting advantage. Now MC finally starting to scout with some hallucination. Hasuops, he knows exactly where he's at right now. MC, I guess he kind of does, but he didn't for, for a moment. And uh, I just like to, to be on Colossus tech, I think better than uh, to be on uh, Templar tech or Archon before. Mm. Because in this case, Hasuops, if he just had the Twilight here very, very soon, which, oh, he, he already did. He's charging, he's starting charge and plus two. He's gonna get the Templar Archives, and I think he goes for a third base and just a very solid standard style from there. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see at how many Colossus he stops making them, and also how MC chooses to counter, because MC, you, you cannot stay on Zealot, Archon, and Immortal unless you're gonna all in. In this case, he got his Robo very late. Look, his Immortal count is only one right now. He's getting a second one. So he's gonna need either Colossus himself or Tempest. But Hazuops knows that right now. So he's going to want to look to maybe hit a timing 
Wen is very, very strong. All right now, because he has the army advantage, his army is stronger overall, he might go for the gold, yeah, which is also do. a good thing you can do. And, I mean, coming back to what you were saying about Tempest, unfortunately for MC, because of his initial opening, he didn't have the Stargate there in the first place. So it's going to be a little bit harder for him to transition onto that uh, uh, counter that we would normally see for those Colossi. Uh, but MC has done really, really well about macroing up here. Right now, his army supply is higher. Maybe the quality of the army isn't as good, isn't as well-rounded, but yeah. he will crush force fields pretty quickly. So Hazus oh. has to oh be careful. Oh, and he catches the Mothership core. That's big. It didn't get any time warps down. Yeah, I think Hazus' army is better than MC, but not in an open area like yeah. this. He needs Archons. He's getting the first one now, but MC's on the chase. He knows that his timing is right now. Oh, those force fields were useful. All those were crushed by MC very quickly. Also, using those Zealots to march on forwards. Those Archons, so important in bringing down those force fields. Time warp as well. Those Colossi, very vulnerable. Blinks forward, kills off one of them. The second one had to micro back so furiously, but this was absolutely MC's timing to hit. Hasuobs was in the middle of nowhere and lost that Mothership course so easily. MC really bringing the power here here to has to orbs. Yeah, and I think this might be it here. Yeah. He keeps on reinforcing behind this with a lot of gateway units. Oh. He still has two Immortals alive. He has one Archon that's a little bit injured, but has has lost everything. And great folks fire with those Immortals from MC there as well, bringing down those Colossi, making sure that they have to micro their hearts out to keep themselves alive. Whilst he had so many Zealots just to buffer up against that, Hasu orbs. he walked into no man's land and he got punished. I did not expect this to happen. Taking the gold meant he had to be out there to make sure he could protect it, but that meant his army was very vulnerable to a fight. MC with the blink, uh, catching this off guard, getting... If you get the Mothership Core with that much energy, uh, this is going to be definitely a big advantage to you. And yeah. in this case, MC, he just went for the follow-up attack. I'm really surprised that Hazuops has let this happen, because he literally let this happen. He was not supposed to be that far out there at the Watchtower. And you know what? When he was at the Watchtower and he saw Ar MC's uh, army coming, I think he hesitated for a second. He was like, should I pull back? He's like, ah, maybe he's bluffing. And then MC started to get in there and Hazu is like, okay, maybe I should pull back, but not with a recall. So he just tried to run away, but MC's army caught up. There was Blink, there was Charge, there was uh, Immortals, there was Archons. The Colossus are very slow. And in this case, Hazu really completely ca got caught off guard. He did not react accordingly. Again, it's easy for us to see. We do see everything. We see the army supply. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think if Hazu had bought himself two more time, uh, two more minutes, Without dying, he would definitely have won. With small Zelots and Archons to tank for his Colossus, there is no way he would have lost this. It really felt as if he, you know, moving out there with the posture, thinking that his army was better, that he was, you know, looking to protect his gold base investment, but at the same time, it would just completely, completely backfired. And now MC with this massive, massive army, those two Colossi for Hasuobs have really not a whole lot to complement them on the ground. So they have to be so careful. He's going to be babysitting those with his micro as carefully as possible, but it doesn't even matter at this point. MC's army is absolutely furious, continuing on, and there's no Nexus Nihio at all, so not even a Photon Overcharge possibility, absolutely nothing as it gets ripped apart. There's even Zealots on the third base. GG, MC with a great recovery, but one would say the Hasuobs might have given him that. Yeah, I think uh, if we were to do a resume from replaying this game to the part where Hazu was at the Watchtower, he would play this like a thousand times better. Yeah. Then, as I keep repeating, we do see everything, and maybe Hazu he finally he finally started mi making mistakes, not scouting enough. Because since he does not see the army size of his opponent, even though he had some little bit of time to see it, you also have to be thinking all the time in this matchup and in this situation, what might your opponent be taking into? So maybe he was thinking MC is probably taking into Colossus or Tempest himself. He's not going to invest everything into an attack, which is not supposed to work which is the attack that MC went for. Even though it was his timing, because he was not taking to anything else, uh, he knew that his opponent wouldn't know about that as well. So this is a case of uh, trying to assume and anticipate what your opponent is going to do, which in this game, MC got the much better end of by surprising his opponent. Well, that means the boss toss is now one game up. But... After Habitation Station, we now move on to Ultrazine Stronghold, a map that we've already theorized might be a little bit better here for Hasu Obs, as he does like that big macro focus, but now that I say that, I recall the previous times we've seen MC on this map, and we've seen three gateway aggression. We've even seen a straight to blink uh, on this map as well, and being very, very yeah. aggressive, despite the huge map. Yeah, um, but... Ah, it's really hard to call too. Mm. I guess against Hazuops, it's really hard to go for these aggressions and make them work. It's definitely possible sometimes. 
in the previous game, it was really a mid-game attack that made MC uh, be able to take it. His early on attack didn't really work. Even though he did some damage himself, he took more damage than uh, he inflicted onto his opponent. And Hazops, I was actually surprised. He went for that third gateway, then the Nexus. Uh, maybe he was afraid of uh, some kind of follow-up attack from MC after he had expanded. So in the end, he managed his expansion really well and he tech to Colossus, which I liked. But going for the goal definitely was was a little bit too early. He didn't have enough just yet. And I think being in a better position with his army was one thing, but also he should have taken the other base. He didn't have to go for the gold to try and gain some kind of crazy lead. Because when you take the gold, the moment you take it for like one or two minutes or even before it's finished, you're going to be very vulnerable to attacks there. Because it's a very open area. If you, your opponent usually is going to have more army than you, if he takes the watchtower and is uh, standing there, mm -hmm. he can get much better engagement than you. So it's very tricky to take the gold safely on this map. And uh, Hazuops was not able to make it work in the previous game. Well, Ultrazim Stronghold now. Will we see a bit of a change up here from both of these players? One would imagine so. Nexus first. Nexus first? <laughs> who was it who went Nexus first? It was in Pro League. It was Stork against Parting. Uh, Good memory. Yeah. So that was cool. He actually made it work really, really yeah. well on Frost. You need to be very fortunate. If, you're, if your opponent scouts early on, and by early on, I mean not even just at 13 or earlier than that, just even after core, you're going to be in trouble because it's going to be very hard. But on this map, it's going to be easier to pull off. So we'll see. I think uh, any of them goes for this. Was it against passing or was it against rain? Uh, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, for now, let's get into game number two as we have Hasuobs currently one game down, looking to try and bring it back on what we may consider to be a bit better of a map for him as we now jump into that game. So, Hasuobs here. An absolute staple of the German scene. As he faces off against MC, Global Esports Management. MC repping them well, doing extremely well in all the tournaments he enters into, uh, but hasn't taken that premier win that he really wants right now. As we have spawning down to the south, our red Protoss, aptly so, whereas he represents Mouse Sports, he is Hasu Obs. And up to the top right, we have our blue Protoss. Currently one game up, looking to advance on to the winner's final here in the upper bracket. It is MC. No, oh, no gateway made by Hasuops yet? Uh-oh. And 14 probes. Uh-oh. <laughs> is this it? it oh, is God. It? He's uh -oh. going for it. Next Has is 16. Hasuops <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you you have to be fearless to do this because if you open a scout seat early on or if he goes for a gateway ten <gasps> Oh my god, oh. which way does he go? He's going. He's he's, he's going, going down the right way. Oh ah. my god. This is gonna be so sad. As <laughs> he's gonna throw down the Nexus first and uh being scouted this early uh, I just don't see how you can hold. If you don't go for something like a forge up your end, but then you're very exposed to some kind of mothership core attack. Yeah. If MC had scouted the other way, this is a completely different game. If he spots this as late as the, the, his third scout, this is completely different because he, he, MC already has chosen his tech. He cannot chrono boost his warp gate exclusively. Actually, MC uses an additional chrono boost onto his Nexus here, so he's not going to have as much uh, chrono boost for his warp gate. But overall, I mean, he's already getting a score. We only have gateway being made now by Hazuops. And upon seeing this scout, Hazuops has to know in how much trouble he is right now. Yeah, all the hand, all the cards are in MC's hand right now. Uh, and it's really up to him what he wants to do. That Cybernetic score is going to finish up vastly quicker here for him. And then once that's done, he has three in each gas here. What is he going to do? It's going to be straight to the Stargate. OK, this is going to be difficult to hold off. Yeah. Uh I'm actually surprised. Like usually upon seeing this, like MC just started Warmgate, his opponent doesn't have Cybernetic score yet. You can just get uh three additional gateways, corner boost your own Warmgate a lot, and just get in his face right uh, right there and then, yeah. very early on. But in this case, MC going for the quick target, do you think it has to be for an oracle, a very quick oracle. He might be scouted. Yeah, he may be. I, I, I this is one clever thing that Hasselhoff oh. did, realizing how quickly he was scouted yeah. as well. This is if Hasuops is able to get two stalkers out and there is a, a mothership, uh, an oracle early on, I mean, he might be able to defend well enough to, 
to basically stabilize in the game and be able to win. It's going to be very difficult. Oh, he's going to see it. Well, I mean, this is still, even yeah. if he does see it, it's still a hard hole to make with that Zealot and Mothership He needs to corner boost Stalkers, and it's actually exactly yeah. what he's doing. He's corner boosting one right now, and uh, he needs to get a second one ASAP. Ah. Oh, the probe's going to be killed, actually. Yeah, he certainly wants to kill that, just in case that was being pesky as warp, warp, warp gate tech is much, much quicker here. So, Oh, oh okay, he was supply block for a second. How's the ops really scared me here? Gets but he's getting it. a second Stalker now. I cannot believe he. This is looking like he might be able to hold. I really thought that. Usually, when you scout this this early on, this is game. But now MC, he's made a choice, and Hazu, he spotted it. Good unit positionings here by Hasu Ob so far. Just making sure that Mothership Core doesn't get anything done over there, but there's no probes to tickle away anyway. Uh, but the Oracle is really the big part of this story, as it's going to go straight for the Stalker here. Yeah, this is a mistake. He's going to mm. pull back, and uh, Hasu Ob's knowing about this. You see, he's already transferred probes from his natural to his main. And he feels even comfortable enough to get a Twilight Council. Oh my god. I think he's got away with this. Yeah. He has got away with this. And MC back at home has resided himself to the fact that he's not going to do a whole lot more. Yeah. He's got the Nexus on the way, but there's still the threat of two Oracles, which can be scary. Uh, photon of a charge, maybe. Yeah, I think. Azu, he knows that he has Photon of a charge plus a bunch of Stalkers, so he already he's resaturating his natural. Ooh. And he forces the recall. Whoa. So this is great for Hasuobs here in game number two. Man, what? I'm really surprised that MC went for what he did here. Because this... I was very skeptical right away. This is not supposed to work. He tried to surprise his opponent. A lot of people that go for Nexus first, it's interesting to note that they don't scout with it. Yeah. yeah. They they bank everything. They put everything they have onto the economy. Yeah. And in this case, as the Ops, he was smart enough to scout. And spotting was he was up against is the only reason he was able to hold as well as he did. Mm, those two oracles still do not find a way in. The defense here for Haswabs is absolutely tight, and he's adding on a few gateways as well as Chrono Boosting Blink. These oracles are having a hard time really wiggling around and being able to see all of that as well. Yeah, and Haswabs, he saved quite wow. a lot of energy. He didn't have to use Photon of a Charge earlier. Ooh, one of those oracles is going pretty low. So and Haswabs is going to be in a situation where he's going to have Photon of a Charge ready to defend, possibly even two of them. And he can go for aggression with four gateways plus blink. He's going to have better economy than his opponent, more units. And uh, this could work out very, very well for him with the nice hole that he had early on. And interestingly, MC threw down Revelation on some of those Stalkers. The Stalkers didn't go close enough to the extra gateways to be spotted, but now they fly in anyway and see oh. it. So, and he throws down the Revelation just to keep an eye on absolutely Ooh, if, everything. If he had gone for probe kills here, he would have gotten quite a lot. The yeah, Stalkers were out of position, and so was the Mothership Core. And he um, knew they were out of position because of the Revelation, yeah, right? Yeah, surprised. So, hmm. Anyway, uh, this is going to continue on. Uh, he sees the timing of when these are warping in as well, does MC, as that revelation is on those gateways. So. He sees a probe stuck there as well. <laughs> does he see? Oh, <laughs> poor little guy. And so did Hasselobs as he tried to select it and get it out, but not successful. He's going to kill that off, and uh, that is going to be it. But the oracles fly into the natural, trying to get a few kills themselves, four uh, in total so far. Yeah, not MC, he knows exactly what he's up against. He sees there's uh, six gateways in total, there's blink, so he's getting... Void race any mortals right now. He's been quite successful uh, before with this uh, composition. Remember, the one game that he won against here was with those, but with some nice timing mm. in a very completely different format and game than we're seeing now. Goes an overcharge to push these guys away, but it doesn't really matter as he does get a few more kills. Five in total, loses one of the oracles, but a second one does still remain. So yes. he continuously has to deal with that threat back at home. I'm surprised that Hazu is committing as much as he is to this, because he knows that he's been scouted. The good reflex here will be to Chrono Boost out probes, go for a third base, and then later go for in timing on that third base of MC. But he's committing everything he has to so many stalkers, actually. He's going to yeah. have a critical mass here. If he blinks in there, gets the shots on those immortals, uh, and then the Void Ray. That force field's important. It will force a few blinks, uh, not only defensively, but also maybe offensively, if Hasuobs would have wanted to get up there, and in turn, it would have been on cooldown. So MC right now holding on strong with that Photon Overcharge activated. Um, and he will have a lot of firepower behind those immortals and Void Rays that these stalkers have to be very careful of. Oh, there goes time. Oh, he actually blinks forwards aggressively here. Thus, he does not have it defensively to try and get out for a little bit. Gets himself an immortal, a stalker as well, but he's losing a few stalkers himself. Has to blink out, loses another stalker. He has to be so careful against the Void Ray immortal army. Yeah, I thought that Hazu was in a great position, but going for the offense here was not the right choice. And because of that, he's falling behind on supply. And he got a few more kills with that Oracle. Uh, that Oracle's now up to 11 kills, so he gets 16 in total here. Oh my god, that's more than a few. Very, very nicely done. He's uh, 10 workers up at this point across two bases, which is a big difference in terms yeah. of that economy. I big. think Hazu was 
Oh, he brought his Mothership Core, that's why. Mm, he didn't have the Photon yeah. Overcharge. He wanted to have a Time Warp. So he wanted to commit even more than I thought to the attack. But I think in the end, the Time that Warp really didn't do too much yeah, for him. Yeah, and he, instead of having a Photon Overcharge to help him defend. Uh oh. Oh my, what? Uh, the scale race coming out. Dun, dun, dun. It's like a, a fleet from the Empire in Star Wars. That you would <laughs> usually only see this in a PVZ, but MC feels confident enough to move across the map. He knows that there is only Blink and a lot of stalkers from his opponents. He has to be which, careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the stalkers, they are very close to there. I think he gets a pile on and then goes home. Otherwise, he's going to actually lose a Void Ray if he's not careful. Oh, wow. Ooh, he opts for the Oracle, though. Has actually, actually has I like that. could have waited more, actually. Yeah. It's like one of those movies, you know, he's like, wait a little bit, a little bit more, and then once those of the Void Race would have been in the middle line, he could have blinked forward and sniped them. And now it looks like MC is actually moving into a aggressive position here because he has so much firepower. I mean, wh what does Hasu have to rival that? Army supplies are 67 to 36 right now, and four Archons, four Immortals, and five yeah. Void Rays against purely Stalker only. Yeah, he needs a lot of oh Zeros and Archons to be able to hold yeah, uh, here. He and will he get them? I don't oh, think the so. Oh, core! It doesn't have energy. energy. Oh. The stalkers God. are going to buy the time. Saving Important. The day here. He needs to force field maybe the ramp to make sure his opponent cannot get up there. Actually, big Zealot warping across the map to try and counter attack. And a snipe goes off on that uh, Mothership Core of MC. Yeah, he, it's clever to go for that counter attack, but at the same time, oh, nice micro here by MC, saving one of those Void Rays. Very, very important. Those Zealots also going for the counter. So he might lose a little bit of his economy here, but if these units breach that ramp, MC is going to have a prime position to do a lot of damage. He's trying to get out Immortals as quickly as he can do. And Zealot charges on the way here for Hasuobs. He has to buy time to get the Immortals out, to get the uh, Zealot charge out. Everything. These zealots are buying him that time. Yeah, MC. He's realized that he can. He could not make it up the ramp, so he's gonna pull back. And Hasuops is on the chase. He knows Whoa. that those units are very slow. If he's able to catch some void rays or some immortals, which actually they kind of blocked each other here for a second. Look at that one. He turns around. Ugh, could have to kill that. Uh, zealots will get cleaned up by void rays. He blinked forwards and actually tried to snipe out one of those arc immortals that only lost its shields in the end. Guardian shield goes up. He knows he's in a little bit of trouble if he fights this army straight head on, especially if the focus fire from MC is very good. And oh, they're like both chasing each other. Yeah. They're taking turns. This is like Benny Hill, man. Doesn't want to lose the mothership call. And for now, he does not. So behind this, MC is grabbing himself a third base, realizing he's probably... And again, Hazu is the one chasing MC. And by the way, he, he finished charge. Yeah. So if he gets a lot of Zealots and Archons in this situation, I think Hazu is going to have the advantage up until MC reaches a good Colossus count. But the one reinforcing pylon for MC did fall. So he has to be very, very careful about how he takes his engagement. And well, I think Hazu is going to go for a huge timing on that base, on that third base of his opponents. If he has a lot of Zealots and Archons, just, which yeah. by, right now he's warping in across the map. Could work out. Nice blink back there. Will catch himself one Immortal as well as get out with the majority of those Stalkers. And actually throws down a few Force Fields here to try and deal with that. Some Zealots come in from the back that might be able to start working on those Immortals, but they're not really connecting with them just yet. Uh, does get one up to the top left-hand corner, but still, the Void Rays and Immortals dishing out a lot of damage. The one disadvantage here for MC is that he doesn't have that many Gateway Forces with this to support. So he has to be careful just in case there were a lot of zealots here for Hasu Obs. Yeah. Oops. MC has been doing this so well. He never cha he never chased too far out. Every time he's trading well and then he's pulling back, he had a nice supply lead and look, he's even defending back at home at the same time. Very nice defensive warp in there of Zealots. At the same time, though, Hasuob's going to town on his opponent's third base. MC has to be careful, has to be mindful of all of these locations at the same time. But as this continues on, Hasuob's army is not as cost efficient, is not as strong as MC's. He needs to get this. Ne if you can get this Nexus, that's really nice. But he's trading off quite a lot for it. There might be the potential here for MC to turn around and counterattack with how much yeah. power he has behind this. They have the same worker count, but now Hasu has a third base. He could saturate it quite well. You see, he has a lot of problems in his main and natural. If Hazu does that, and uh, I, keep, I know I keep saying it, but if he manages to reach a good Zealot and Archon count and gets a good engagement, he's going to do really well. The thing is, MC, unlike Hazu Ops in the previous game, I don't think he's, he's going to let this happen. He still has a supply lead. He's retaking his third base. He's getting Colossus right now against somebody who's only, again, on Immortals, Zealot, and Archons. So uh, MC's position is a lot better still in this game, even though Hazuops did have a nice move just now. I mean, surely from here, MC could just warp in Zealots only and do pretty well in any engagement, right? Yeah. He has those power units that he needs behind that gateway force to really complement. And right now it's 14 Zealots to 24, Hasuobs. If he gets a good flank, a good engagement, this maybe is he a, can do something. This is a very late Twilight, by the mm. way, by MC. You see he's getting plus one ground armor right now. The attack is much more important in this matchup. And Hazu is already getting plus two. It's almost finished. Look, he's getting a war prism. 
So I think what this might be here is a commitment to being a lot more aggressive. Four Zealots dropped, a lot more Zealots being warped in by Hazu to basically try and spread uh, his opponent's army out. But in this case, MC, he has a lot of defending capability. He has four Void Rays to help and defend against this Warp Prism. Uh, he's going to have the Mothership Core with a Photon Overcharge as well. So this is going to be very hard for us to, to make work yeah. in this case. You see he's sending in an Hallucination right now. And upon seeing the army of his opponent uh, at the natural, I think he should move his army across the map, make sure he can attack the third base, drop the main and the natural at the same time. And uh, as much as it's going to be tricky to defend, if MC is able to defend well enough, this is going to be it for Hazu. Yeah, the only way that Warp Prism can really escape properly is if it did have speed against something like Void Rays, especially since uh, there's a little bit of a stock yeah. account as well. But it's going to come in here. It's going to try and do a bit of damage. And Hazu, uh, he actually, he didn't well. move his army across the map. He's only got four Stalkers to try and snipe some probes. So this is only an attempt to weaken the economy oh, of his opponents. I love the four stalker kill squad here, just diving in and killing off a few of those probes. Nicely done. Also heading over to the third to warp in. He's already dropped a few zealots at the main. Uh, so good moves, but at the same time, Void Rays, kaboom. Yeah. They absolutely destroy that wall prism. Not sure kaboom is uh, the okay. correct Bzzz. one for, uh, <laughs> for warp prism. If you want that. <laughs> being killed from Void Rays. <laughs> that's not bzzz, that's not like a mosquito, man. Dude, the Void Rays, they Anyway, uh, Kill Squad didn't really get too many kills there. Colossi pushing it back. And uh, MC's army is still very formidable. I think all in all, that for Hasu Obs was more... Uh, I mean, yes, he did get some probe kills and did all right. Yeah. He's got up to 24 to 16 right now. But it's also about buying time because yeah. MC's army this whole time has been so strong. Yeah, the Colossus count now, five for MC right now. Uh, wow. This is looking very, very scary. He's getting a 6-1. I think MC is just going to want to look to hit the timing right now when he's almost maxed out. He should be maxed out by the time he hits. And Hazu is only getting his first Colossus right now. So even though he's getting plus three, this is not going to be finished on time. He's not going to have plus three before the next engagement begins. And right now, he should realize in how much trouble he is, because those stalkers, they see the army. He's actually moving out. He's looking to try and take a fight in an open space. But mm. MC, if he's careful enough, this is not going to work. Yeah, he need, Hasuobs absolutely needs flanks. Somehow, some way, he needs a big, big flank of Zealots to really hit from either side. And that's what he's doing. He's separating yeah. up his army here. He absolutely has to come in from two locations. Otherwise, he is going to die. Those six Colossi dish out so much damage. Can Hasuobs make this work? Ooh, time he throws <gasps> straight on those Colossi. That's a brilliant, brilliant engagement position here for Hasuobs. But even then, it might not work out because MC's army, the quality of his army, is so strong. The Archons close the gap with those Colossi. Good control here, though, from MC to keep those alive. The Void Ray is also going to town on the Colossi. And meanwhile, all the Zealots are killing off a lot of probes in that mineral line. So MC takes a decisive supply advantage. That was as good as it could have gone for Hasu Ops. And even then, it's still looking shaky. Yeah, MC did a ton of damage in that third base. He took out all of the probes there. So essentially, he's on three bases, but he's been held. And Hasu Ops, he still has a lot of units alive. This is weird here. As the, ups, as, I think it, as the supply lead in army right now, 44 to 39. This is not the biggest of leads, but MC being an ahead on walkers, MC definitely needs to pull back right now and regroup, get more units, make sure he doesn't get uh, killed from a counter attack. He's lost most of his Colossus count. Yeah. And oh, by the way, plus three about Whoa, to finish now. That's big. Whereas MC is only on one one upgrades. He hasn't even started plus two. He's really scared of a counter attack right now. That was absolute. If, if Hasu Obs had had a bit more of a powerful army, maybe yeah. had a few more Colossi there, he would have taken a really, really strong engagement and did a decisive you, did lead. Did you really expect anything else than a sick hold from Hasu here? <laughs> <laughs> he certainly has the best holds when it comes to almost any matchup, actually, in the Europeans. It's really cool to watch. Uh, but again, really nice positioning. Now MC still moves on forwards. He does have to be careful, though. You've mentioned it already. Plus three weapons against plus one. If this Colossus gets a few shots off itself, uh, that's a big, big difference in the damage output. Yeah, especially here. Uh, Hazuops, he's got two Colossus himself now. He's about. He's gonna get. He's getting a third one. When he gets that, he's gonna have so, such a sick firepower. I think to to go into uh, the fighting. Oh, and he's whopping in zealots on the left hand side again here. So he absolutely wants to get that sick engagement like he did last time. This is gonna be important though. He's gonna yeah. come in from the side. And Hazuops is a slight uh, army lead right now. He's being very shy. He does not dare to engage just yet. Yeah, I'm surprised he's letting this base yeah. die, possibly. 
He's about to go for it. Maybe the Nexus is going to die before. Uh, spreading his units out. If it dies, though, all MC is going to do is just pull back instantly. Oh, he's going oh, he to... Up to the left! Call. Up to the left! Those Zealots at the back! If they're able to deal with that, it's going to be amazing! Time Warp will end up landing on a few of these Zealots. They only just now got 100 energy. So clutch, so important. But Hasu Ops, this is his one opportunity. If he can kill off this army, if he can go for a counter-attack, that's big. There's no gateway units here. This army supply in advantage of Hasu Ops, but that one Time Warp really limiting how close those Immortals can get to those Colossi, but the blink forward from three Stalkers, they get one Colossus, a second one will fall as well. These five Zealots are so important to try and hold on against this. Actually, that one Mothership Core <laughs> is uncontested right now. Yeah. One Stalker to get rid of that. Actually, this was such nice micro here by MC. He knew he had more Colossus, so he kept on pulling back. He had the pylon behind to help and reinforce, and right now he's on four Colossus against just three. And even though Hazuops, he has some Archons and Immortals, those are not shooting in the fight. They but are just he, getting kited. He lost the third base. What yeah. can he do now? Surely he has to go for some kind of counter-attack. Uh, because... He does, but this uh, is Hazuops, man. Yeah, I think he just... I think he loses out. I mean, he's going to try and re-expand as a probe at the third base, but all the while, whilst this is happening, his main is uh, his main and natural are mined out. Hasuobs has very little income. He's long distance from that third base, and MC is accruing a, a Colossi count once again. He's getting extra yeah. gateways. Time is, is against him. This is not a, the kind of game you get to see every day. MC, because of taking a later natural, he still has a whole bunch of minerals there. He's mining it out right now, but look, he has enough money to start a force base, and uh, MC is going to be in a great position from there. He has enough... Co look, he's preparing a concave. Yeah, uh, he's he, in great position. He's done really well, even though he was on 1-1 one, one upgrades against 3-0, uh, which it was just because he had a lot more Colossi, obviously. And uh, in this case, I do think that Hasuop should have tried to save in Nexus, because he didn't even get that much more units. Exactly, and also, no. if you let the Nexus die, you might as well wait behind it, because he's already dead. You mm -hmm. don't have to fight right now. So it was a bit weird by Hazu to wait for this long. Yeah, I really feel like he played a little bit too shy here. But MC, man, what micro and uh, engagements from both of these players. This was really top-notch from both of them. Yeah. They really made most of the situation. The time warps were just in, in clutch positions. Because if that time warp hadn't have landed in the particular area that yeah. it had done for MC, then those immortals could have chased down those colossi and done a lot of damage because they just didn't have any gateway units to reinforce. So big, big deal here. But now Hasso Orbs, look at the supplies. I mean, he's fallen behind catastrophically because of losing this third base. If it had just stayed alive, but even yeah. then it would have been testy. I wonder if Hasso Orbs is going to try and take a fourth. Yeah, he's sending a probe there. Can he really play this out though? As soon as MC yeah. maxes out, I think he's it's just Hazu, gonna... man. He's just he just takes a force and he's like, attack me. I wanna see you try again. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it. Come on, attack me. Uh, how, what are we at? We're at seven Colossi against three. Twenty-one zealots against three. Ah, that's that's painful. Um if MC just comes in from either angle himself uh, and takes a good engagement, it's going to be difficult for Hasu Obs to really do anything against that. His income is still, and that has been, that income that we're seeing there has been going on for minutes now. That difference. So, yeah, well, this is, uh, this is <laughs> tough. There was some probes stuck in the main of MC. He killed them himself with one of his Colossus. Oh, in that little hole in between the gateways and the cybernetics core. You don't want to get a prism. Which is surprising, because at this point, getting a prism is always going to be nice to reinforce into fights. You don't yeah, want to have only pylons. But uh, in this case, MC is basically extending his Colossi lead, catching up on upgrades. He's got plus two now. He's just started plus three, and uh, he's just going to have so much. I think, again, he, go he does the timing when he's maxed out. And this this time, if has ups holes, we might have as well give him the title right now, because no attack will work against this guy. Yeah, we're in for a treat in a second, and it looks like it's going to be at the hands of MC, now marching across the map with a lot of Colossi. A 186 supply against 117. Hasu Obs has had a very tough time ahead of him when it comes to replenishing his army. 135 army supply against 84. Oh my jeez, that's, that's a pretty big deficit. Hasu Orbs moves into the middle of the map. Not really sure he should be moving out anywhere yeah, against to, this army. He needs to pull back. The concave is going to be a lot better. He tries to get a feedback, does not get it. Pretty nice time warp, but soon we're going to be in for a boss toss discotheque with that amount of Colossi. This is going to be very, very difficult for Hasu Orbs to really hold on again. Those Colossi alone are enough to really start shredding that up as the double time warps land on a lot of this. Zealots charge in for Hasu Orbs, but there's just not enough here. As Despite MC's Colossi all being very, very clumped up, it's still very difficult for Hasu Ops to really do anything. He chases down the Colossi, another one will end up falling, but this third base is going to get plundered 
Uh, in just a second. Yeah, at this point, uh, when your opponent has this many more Colossi than you do, if you don't have Tempest, you're you're in trouble. Yeah, boom -ching, boom -ching. This is this is all for MC here. He goes to the Disco GG as he takes it two to zero. Pretty, pretty well done there by MC. Maybe a one or two shaky moments there. Mr. Hasuobs getting away with Nexus first, but even that was not able to keep him in it. He recovered really well from the, his start. I really think that Hasuobs, after holding the initial attack, was ahead, but choosing to go for the aggression when there's two oracles out, going with your Mothership Force and not leaving it at home for using Photon of a Charge, his attack was defended very well by MC, and he lost a ton of probes, and then from there he was just too far behind to be able to make it work. Even though his upgrades were nice, uh, MC, he, he hit all the right timing he had to hit to keep on extending yeah. his lead. And even though it has up some really nice hold, it was not good enough. Oh, well, that means MC advances on to the upper bracket final here. Uh, and aside from that, we also have Stardust having defeated Hanfi uh, in that second round as well. So we see an, an MC Stardust PvP, which is pretty good, considering we had MC going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hero in the grand final of Sao Paulo. Stardust was very close to getting to the grand final of Asus Rock. Yeah, Stardust is insane in PvP. This, that's it's gonna be a insane. really good PvP. Yeah. Really, really good. So that is probably going to be the next match, I assume, broadcasted here, because that determines I who... I think no. You don't think so? Might be a loser's match. So either TLO Maybe. versus... Uh, but that, I mean, that one determines who actually goes through to the groups tomorrow. So yeah. MC or Stardust is definitely going to be there. Not Both sure of those... But both of those are actually at Katowice as well, already. Uh, but for now, guys, we are done here for that series. Let's send it over to Red Eye. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, uh, so game two done and dusted and very straightforward in the end for MC. Hassel was putting up a good fight there in uh, the PvP. In the other semi-final, Rhett, you've been watching the game. Um, it's ended 2-0, as uh, we've already heard, to Stardust. But talk us through a bit of the game. You've got uh, some of the replay from map two, of course, here as well. Yeah, in, uh, in game number one, Stardust played uh, very aggressively and got a hidden pylon up on uh, Hanfi. And then uh, Zelos just came in and kind of ruined Hanfi's life. So <laughs> that, one, that one ended really fast. And then uh, in the second game here on uh, Polar Night, uh, Stardust opened with a very fast uh, third Nexus. And when Hempy scouted this, he decided to go for a bailing nest and then went for a, a massive bailing bust. Okay, so let's drop you into the uh, into the replay. Yeah, so here's a lot of the Zerglings uh, going for the sentries, and uh, Stardust gets perfect force field, so not much Hanfi can do. Uh, after this, the bailings do come in and take out the pylon here, but in the end, uh, Stardust has already like eight gateways, and he just keeps morphing in units and in the end ends up defending. And after that, uh, Hanfi is just too far behind and dies shortly after to like the counter with uh, plus two and, and blink stalkers. That's basically what happened. Okay. Uh, so, in terms of the way that you watch Stardust play, do you think he has what it takes to go against MC and win? Uh, well, his PvP has been extremely dominant uh, in Finland as well as uh, uh, you know in online cups. So, I think uh, in PvP, I think he definitely has what it takes to beat MC. It's going to be a very, very close match, uh, no matter what happens. Uh, should be really good. All right, okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will have another match from the Intel Extreme Masters here in Cologne. Don't go too far away. <laughs> 